Welcome to Vet Talk, man. We got another episode that we about to go through, man. I have one of the coolest guys I ever got to meet, man. I, I've been fortunate to um, actually be out with him with the Fort Worth Rattlers coaching. And, man, I wanted to bring this guy on because I feel like, man, he's somebody special, man. There are a lot of people in life that, you know, you meet and you say, man, I don't want to be like that person. But from my experience in the military and just knowing a little bit about his background, I felt like it would be very, very important and exclusive if I could get this guy to come on the show. So today, man, I have Coach Chris. What's going on, Coach Chris? How you doing today, man? What's going on, Brother Vince? How you doing today, man? How's everything? I, I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to come on. I, I love listening to your uh, your cast and everything as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So for those who don't know you, man, could you just please tell us your name again, man? What's your name, man? Yeah, it's Chris Connaughton. Yes, sir. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people call me coach because I, I do coach high school football. Okay, so um, for the audience, could you please tell me your branch of service? Yeah, I was uh, in the Air Force. Um, <laughs> spent most of my time uh, actually with the Army, uh, oh, though. Wow. And so uh, I have, a, I have a, a slight allegiance to them as well. And then um, I have uh, my father and my brother when we're, were in the Corps. So okay. I have a special love for the Corps and... Uh, my uncle was in the Navy, so, you know, pretty much got love for everybody. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. That's something I didn't know about you. And what's so funny <laughs> is, man, I was born Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, so that's okay. kind of cool, man. I, I, my dad was a Marine, my uncles, Marines, everybody in my family that I know for the most part, most of them were Marines. I think I have a few um people in my family. I would say my granddad, I think he was in the Navy, I think mm -hmm. I have another person in my family. There was something else, but for um, the majority of us, we were either Army or Marines, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, man. Yep. So um, what was your actual job? What was your MOS? What did you do? Yeah, so um, I was a little, uh, a little bit unique. Um, we were uh, specialized in um, a unit called uh, OSI. Um, within OSI um, is a um, is a, a small group of us that that primarily do counterintelligence and anti-terrorism work, um, okay. and do uh, protective service operations. Um, and so uh, I was credentialed as a federal agent, um, and uh, when I was stateside, did most of my stuff, like with the Joint Terrorism Task Force. And then um, when I was overseas, of course, I, I was able to, you know, attach with. Uh, uh, different organizations and groups. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So how long did you do in the um, Air Force? Yeah, so I enlisted for four years. Um, okay. I enlisted in, in May of uh, uh, 2001, of course, right before 9-11 uh, uh, happened, um, and wound up, uh, you know, doing my four, but extending for two more. Um just because of, of so much training and, and travel and everything else. So um, I, uh, I decided to do uh, two more years. So I wound up doing six total. Okay. So would you say 9-11 had a, had a big impact or was a big part of the reason why you ended up joining the military? You know, honestly, it wasn't. Um, you know, okay. I had already, you know, made that decision, already decided to join. Um it, it just, um, you know, I think it refocused me a little bit more on, on what it was going to be all about. Um, I, I was a little bit older. I'd already gone to college okay. um, and decided, you know, that um, I, I wanted a different path. So that's why I decided to join the military. And um, so, you know, 9-11 happened and uh, it was just you know, again, a refocus of of why I was doing it. Yeah, that's pretty cool you got to say that because I know contrary to belief, a lot of people um, 
they assume that a lot of us joined because of 9-11 or a majority of us did. And I know for me, that mm -hmm. wasn't the case also. Like, yeah. for me, to be honest to you, after 9-11, I had people in my ears like, hey, don't join the military. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't mm -hmm. do it. But due to, I would say, life choices that I made, it put me in a position where I had no other choice. So that's pretty cool hearing um, that, you know, 9-11 had nothing to do with it. And I'm not knocking people who did, but just sure. want people to get that, um, to hear from us that, you know, not everybody joined because of 9-11, but, you know, we do remember 9-11. We do know a little bit about it. And I know what's so funny about it for me was um, I was actually in the 10th grade when 9-11 happened. So oh, wow. <laughs> I was, yep. I was my, my perspective of life at that time was not me um having in mind that um I was going to join the military in actuality I thought I was going to college to play football so that was my mm -hmm. dream I'm like I'm going into college I'm going to play football I'm going to the NFL you know the most young yeah. men dream so that that's what I was looking forward to doing and that's what I thought I was going to do man <laughs> yeah and, and um you know I uh I was actually uh back I was I was home when 911 happened um but I, I was in um, uh, Maryland. Um, I was uh, in like the Towson, the Towson, Maryland area okay. when nine eleven actually happened, and um, I was actually on the golf course. and And, and I don't golf. Okay, um, <laughs> if, if anybody wants to ever go golfing with me, as as long as you know that I'm not golfing to to keep score. I'm, I'm golfing to just go out there and knock some balls around and, and have a, a good time. Um, but, uh, you know, that's what we were doing. And, you know, I remember the planes were circling right above us. Oh, wow. And they were, they were so low um, because, you know, of the, of the Pentagon and everything. But, of course, yeah. we had no idea. And so um, <laughs> back, back then it was all pagers still. And, yeah. uh, you know, we had a, you know, I had a pager that, uh, that had been provided and, um, you know, that's, that's what went off. That's all I knew. So, oh, wow. um, and I had to make my way back to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. wow. Wow. That's funny. Cause I know for me, um, during that time when it all happened, like I said, I was in 10th grade. I think I was in Miss McKellen, mm -hmm. McKellen class. We was, um, actually in sociology and we was just sitting there. I think we, matter of fact, we was doing one, our final exam, which I ended up failing and failing that course. And my dad ended up telling me I couldn't play football with, get me my, um, take me to go get my license because I failed this class. It was so crazy about it was all I need was like a 60, to pass the class, but I ended up making like a 20 or something because I tried to cheat off the wrong person paper. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> when it when it went down, man, we were just sitting down and um all of a sudden they um went over the loudspeaker telling everybody cut on their TVs, cut on your TV, cut on your TV. And when we cut it on, all of a mm -hmm. sudden you look and you see this one tower burning and we like, what in the world is going on? And then, like, I would say some minutes or seconds later, that's when the second plane hit. Boom. And it's yeah. just like, at that time, I'll be honest with you, it seemed like a movie, a dream. Like, it just didn't mm -hmm. seem like that was something that was real at that time. Because, you know, up until that point, I don't remember. Um, I think I would say the last um, major event that had happened around that time for us was um, when Timothy McVeigh um, blew up the building in Oklahoma. Like, yeah. no, you know what? That had happened, and then Columbine High. I remember those were like yep. the two major events before that had happened. That was kind of yep. like current and fresh, and people were still trying to, you know, overcome whatever. Sure. Um, ex you know how they felt about that whole experience. Um, whether they were there or just you know in the communities, because you know, again, big events like that was something that was known to happen overseas, but to have it happen in our country during the sure. present time, it was kind of like you know real strange. So. Yeah, it's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, we, um, you know, and for me, I'm from the New York, New Jersey area. That's where I grew up. So, um, you know, my father's side of the family is all from Brooklyn, and my mother's side is all from Staten Island. So, um, you know, the the city is, is like a second home. It was a second home to me. And so, um, you know, my, my cousin was a 
uh, NYPD uh, police officer um, during the time. And uh, my uh, my uncle was a, a fire marshal with the fire department. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it was, um, you know, it really hit home. Okay, so I got a question. So what are some of your likes about um, being in the military? What were the things that you liked the most, the things that you enjoyed the most about being in the military? Um, you know, obviously, I, I liked the um, the camaraderie. Um, yes, you know, for me, um, you know, when I was in Afghanistan, uh, as an example, um, and and I didn't necessarily have it as normal as everybody, as everybody else did, but there was only four of us in all of Southern Afghanistan. That's it. Wow. Um, we covered the entire- did you go over there? Uh, 2007 is when, um, I was over there last and got hit. Um, but, um, you know, to, to give you an example, you know, like I said, there was four of us in all of Southern Afghanistan. We covered the entire South, um, you know, and we really had the freedom to do whatever we wanted. Um, we didn't answer to the base commander. Um, we, you know, we were the guys with the long beards and the civilian clothes <laughs> and, you know, the up armored uh, Range Rover and Tahoe and or Suburban. Um, you know, we had all the uh, the Gucci gear you know, and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, satellite phones and, um, you know, smart books and, you know, whatever you wanted, we had it. And so, um, you know, the freedom that comes with that at such a young age too was, um, was pretty remarkable. So, uh, you know, for me, those types of things were, um, were great, but, but the camaraderie with those guys too, um, and those guys that were in other units, um, other branches, um, you know, is something that to this day, I can pick up the phone, not having talked to a guy, um, you know, and it, it, it'd be years and I could pick up the phone and it will be like we were talking yesterday, you know, um, and so there's that brotherhood. That's pretty cool. Cause I mean, in, in, in the piggyback off a lot of what you were saying, like, um, I was in Afghanistan, um, 08, 09 for 15 months, um, me and my wife to be exact. And, um, yep. one of the things I kind of wanted to do with what you were talking about is kind of give people that visual, um, that most of them don't see because most people think that we all go over there. And we all experience the same things. And to a certain degree, we do. But then mm -hmm. to a certain degree, we don't. And I'm yeah. saying that because most people, when they hear about us going down range, they just think it's bad for everybody. And that's not <laughs> always the case. Like, I know for you yeah. haven't been over there in 07. I mean, I met people who went 06, 07, around that time frame in Afghanistan. Y'all got to see was a total different Afghanistan than what I what than what I had what I was allowed to see. And it was bad for us, but then the group after us I heard went through more than what we went through. So it just seems like there are just different points in the timeline that it just like Afghanistan wasn't always what some people see it as today and it wasn't always what people back then saw it as. It just it's it's just different experience for different folks, man. And that's one of the things I wanted to point out is that um, Afghanistan is not always the same for everybody. Like for me, right. knowing who you were and the things that you've done in um in the military, it's just like, like I said, my hats go off to you and, you know, the, the men out there that did what you did, which I know a lot more. You know, other people like who, um, like who you were that did the things that you've done. And just like, man, that's why when, when I used to go talk to my doctors, I used to tell them like, man, I didn't go through nothing. They were like, yeah, but you got blown up this, that. I'm like, yeah, that was bad. But I always mm -hmm. looked at the people to my left and right and said, man, they went through more than what I went through. So it's hard for me to complain and be upset about what I went about when I know, you know, a gentleman that, named Lopez that got burnt up in his truck. Like, I can't forget about somebody like that. I can't forget about Sergeant Wallace who got shot in the head, you know, 
while on convoy, even though, yeah, he wasn't in my unit, but he worked in the motor pool beside me. So to go from one day seeing this guy to the next day, you know, we stand in the formation and they signing off calling his name and he's not there no more. It's just like, man. And then I was also, um, just so you know, I was at FOB Oregon E, which was, um, I think was in the North. I know we was close to the Pakistan Afghan border and we built this cop called Zurok or whatever, but, um, on FOB Oregon E, we were the casualty collection point. So anytime people died, they brought them all to our fob. And I mean, yep. man, that, that was a, that was an experience, man, because I didn't know that many people could die a day, but I see, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see it, the first it's, it's tough. Um, you know, and so, um, you, you know, it, it's, uh, and, and I, I think a lot of people, um, you know, like I said, they don't have that, that real understanding of, of what it was like, um, you know, and, and I've given talks and all before, and, you know, I, I like to, I like to tell people this, you know, the, the reality of our situation was, was this, um, you know, if, if everybody in the room here, you know, if we, if I was, was out of business or something, you know, if everybody in the, in the office decided to let's go out, for lunch because it's you know Susie or Johnny's birthday you know um, so everybody goes out to lunch however they designate one person has to stay behind you know um, and the reason that that one person has to stay alive uh, stay behind is because while at lunch everybody dies they get into a car accident or they get into you know, someone crazy comes in, shoots up the place, whatever the case may be. Everybody dies. Okay. That was the way we lived every single day is, you know, the four of us never went out together. We always left one person back at, at base because, you know, if all of us died, we always had one person left behind for whoever came back in to replace us for continuity purposes. And that was the reality of the situation. Like you, you just knew like, okay, well, someone was, was going to be coming in to just replace you. And that was it. Um, and the person that was left behind was going to be left behind to fill in all the details for those coming in to replace the three guys that just got, got killed. So, you know, I mean, and, and that's, that's our reality. That's what we live with every day. And, um, you know, it, it's, you know, I, it really, I think stirs with people because they don't think about it that way. And, yes, you know, I think it gives them a real expectation of kind of what, an everyday reality of it is because it is, it's, you know, um, you can lose that many people in a single day. Um, and, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, when you say that, that speak a lot of volume, a lot of volumes to me, because I know like, um, I didn't go through something I, I considered to be tragic, but I remember mm -hmm. after my last convoy, like that day, it broke me down because I didn't realize how close to death I was until that day, because I think we were like two weeks out. And yeah. I remember um, when they sent us out there on mission, they sent us out there with some broken crucible weapons. So I, um, Mark 19 didn't work. Uh, um, all they really co was concerned about was, hey, we need you to go to Sharana, get these MRAPs and bring them back to FOB Organi so that we can transition out and, you know, welcome the new group that was coming in. Well, that day when I almost lost my life, I just broke, man. I, can't, I It's hard for me to even explain to people the emotions of what I was going through mentally because at that moment, it was just like, I was just numb. I was angry. I was upset because all I could think of is, why would they set me up for the kill with some trucks? Like, to me, the trucks weren't more important in our lives, but in that moment, I was, I was just trying to like, I guess just trying to understand like, okay, what, what was so important about these trucks to where they sent us out here on this dummy mission with these broken crucible weapons, knowing that we have to come down route Jeep, which is one of the most 
Worst road in Afghanistan come up between Sharon and Farberg and Eve. Why would they send us out there with these weapons? So when I went back to my room, I broke down, cried, boo-hoo, did the whole thing. And then after that, they were like, hey, send that. We need you to go on missions again. I'm like, sorry, listen, man. I'm going to end up shooting somebody if y'all send me back out there. I'm not going. And mm-hmm. when they sent that next group with the New Mexico National Guard, they lost, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was either 18 or 22 people they had lost, taking mm-hmm. them up to Cobb Arms um, Zerot just so that they can show them how it looked, how the roads looked, because yeah. I was in the engineer unit, so they wanted to make sure that they transition went smooth and they knew where they were going. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately... I don't even think these people were in um, Afghanistan for even two, three weeks. And yep. they send them back home those letters and stuff. Or you know how they do? They blacklist the five yep. and they tell whatever story they had to tell. So it's just crazy, man. It's, sure. it's crazy. But, you know, that takes yep. me into, you know, my next question is, uh, what would be the most memorable moment or event that you had happen while being in the um, military? Um, you know, that, that's a good question. Um, so, you know, honestly, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in life lessons and learning lessons. And, um, you know, the guy that taught my, my tactical medical course, um, was a, a pararescue man um, who had gone into the training uh, area at that time. But this guy, um, his name was Sergeant Seamster, um, and he, uh, unbelievable. Uh, but the guy had like three purple hearts. He had two bronze stars, um, the Air Force Cross. I mean, the guy was unbelievable. Um he was like, I think at the time, the oldest, the oldest guy to have ever gone through bud school. Um, he, uh, trying to think, uh, the, the guy was amazing. Um, and he was outright crazy. Um, I, I remember he was, at that time, he had been in for about 17 years. And, you know, we were laughing the one day because he was, he was super excited and we're like, Sergeant seems to, what, what happened? Why are you so happy? And after 17 years, he had received his first air force, good conduct achievement medal, which you get, <laughs> you get for just being good for three years. Oh, like I this, know that. Got all these medals. And all you know, he, he he finally gets the one that's given to you every three years. It's, it's <laughs> I mean, it's just hilarious, you know, just the the irony in it. But you know, he he taught us that, um, you know, he was one of there was a, I believe thirty there was thirty two, thirty six uh, guys that were at Mogadishu during Black Hawk Down, and he was one of them. That was one of the, the oh, places wow. he got one of the the his Purple Hearts as well. Um, but you know, he, he taught us that, um, when, whenever they would go to retirement ceremonies, of course, you know, generals on the base and so on and so forth, they always wanted him to come and wear his, his uniform with all of his ribbons and this and that, because he looks good, right? You know, he's a, he's a PR, um, a dream, you know, well, um, you know, he would always show up, and again, the the rule is you either wear all or none. Yeah. And he would show up, and he would never wear his ribbons. And, I, I mean, we would watch, and, you know, like I said, generals and all these high-ranking guys would be so annoyed at the <laughs> fact that he wasn't wearing his ribbons. <laughs> you know, and... You know, finally, one day, one of the guys asked him, like, hey, Sergeant Seamster, why aren't you wearing your ribbons? And he said, you know, when I go to these retirements or when I go to these events, it's not about me. It's about the person who's being honored that day. Yes, and for sir. me to wear my stuff and to take any recognition away from the service that they've done, 
is an absolute disgrace to what they, you know, to what they've done. And he's like, and I'll never be that person. You know, he's like, I'll never be a wood chaser. He's like, I haven't done anything in my life to have ever um, gone purposely and, and received an award that I've, that I've gotten, you know, and, and it just, you know, as a young, as a young guy, it, it really struck home to me that, you know, it's not what the military, uh, military is not about joining to get awards or decorations or any of those yes, types sir. of things. It's about service and commitment. And it's about, you know, the, the guy, you know, or, or gal, you know, obviously, um, you know, who is, is there putting in, you know, that work and that commitment alongside of you for their country. And so, um, to me, you know, I think that's the most memorable, um, my most memorable experience, um, that I take with me, I think every day, um, from the service. That's a blessing, man. That's a blessing. And that, and that sounds a lot like, you know, our, uh, walk of faith as believers, man, self-denial, sure. you know, it's something we do every day. We practice self-denial by loving our neighbor as thyself or loving the Lord with all our hearts. So, you know, that yeah. I would, I would have loved to meet that gentleman, man, because that's not like the type of guy that you would want to meet, know, be around, <laughs> learn from, you know, such as yourself, man. Cause I mean, it's, it's the same way. Um, I see you, I see you as far as like, you know, when it comes to these kids and coaching them and doing the things that you do, you know, me just coming out there for the first time in my life, Mm. It's a lot about selfless service and being willing to serve other people. Because at the end of the day, as a coach, what I'm learning is, is even though I'm the one who, you know, instructs the kids, helps them with the X and O's, putting your hands down, feet placement, and all these other things, at the end of the day, it's still not about me because the kids got to go out there. They have to execute. So it's not a matter of who's behind coaching them. It's a matter of, these kids, you know what I'm saying, doing their part and doing what they have to do, even though, you know, people love to believe, oh, man, Nick Saban is a great coach, which he is. But at the end of the day, what makes him a great coach is those people to his left, to his right, and those who are, you know, actually executing what it is that he's saying for them to do. And that's the same way it is. And I walk as believers, man. I mean, the Bible is the greatest book ever, but at the same time, God expects us to execute and, just do what it is that he's telling us to do. So that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, for me, it's one of those where, and like I try to teach the kids and tell the kids too. I mean, look, I fail daily, you know, and, um, you know, some, some of my failures are bigger than others. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, I try, I try as hard as I can to model what, what the book has taught us, you know, what scripture teaches and, and all. And, um, for me, you know, that's what, that's what it should be about. You know, um, look, you you know, money comes and goes, um, you know, wins and losses come and go, you know, um, reputations come and go, you know, those, those things. You know, but for me, it's it's one of those where um, how are the kids, you know, that you're you're impacting? What what does that impact look like to them? Um, and so, you know, that's that's where I'm I'm uh, you know that, that's what's important to me. And so, you know, I, I always tell them. You know, I said it again last night to them too, you know, um, you know, who's watching you for the first time today, you know, and as long as you ask yourself that question, you know, whenever you're doing something, um, you know, who's watching you for the first time today, uh, and you live by that standard, um, you know, hopefully you'll be doing it, doing it right, because if you're doing something you're not supposed to, and somebody's watching you, you know, that's what's going to be modeled. And so um, try to do what you do and and do it the right way. Uh, Do what's what's honoring of the Lord. And, uh, you know, hopefully whoever's watching you that day will pick up on that instead. Yes, sir. So that would go into my um, 
question. So what made you start the Rattlers football team? Was this your first experience? Is this something that, you know what I'm saying, you just thought of one day? How how did this whole thing come about? Because I want to introduce people into the Fort yeah. Worth Rattlers and basically so, just, man, everything that comes with the Rattlers, man. Yeah, no. So the the Rattlers, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. I was able to uh, to retire early. Um, but after, after the military, um, I wound up, uh, I had my own business for, for a little while. Um, and then I also, um, crossed into the state police, uh, realm. And so I, I, I was with the, the state police here in, in Texas and, um, helped, uh, uh, start up a tactical fugitive unit and, um, a missing child unit and all, um, here in the state of Texas. So, um, you know, my wife and I, we've adopted all of our children. Uh, we've been blessed to do that. Uh, the Lord has a, a sense of humor for sure. Uh, cause <laughs> we have six. um, we have four left in the, in the home, um, two that have, have married or, or graduated college and gone off. Um, and so, um, you know, really it was just a, a matter of, um, we were helping, we, we had, uh, some kids in a, in a private Christian school and, um, I started coaching there. That's kind of how I got into coaching. And, um, once I, I left there, uh, I took a year off, but I had some kids that were still there at about three that were still very interested in going to college. Okay. And so, um, that's why I started the Rattlers. Um, you know, well, I started Atlas. I didn't start the Rattlers yet. I started Atlas. And so uh, Atlas stood for Athletic Training, Leadership, and Academic Support. Um, of course, military, we, we do everything in acronyms, right? Yes, so sir. That, that's where Atlas came from um, because I wanted these guys to still remember, hey, look, I'll help you guys with this recruiting process for free. Um, I'm not charging you anything, but these are what we're going to still remember are the keys to getting to, to college. Um, then there's also that one other key, that key important factor, that L right there in the middle, that center of everything um, is for the Lord, you know, yeah. because if you're not centered and you're not grounded in the Lord, none of this else really matters. Um, Amen. And so that's why I really liked the the acronym of, of Atlas because I, I liked that L right there in the middle. Um, yes, yeah, sir. So uh, those three kids turned into seven that first year just from other coaches and kids I knew in the area uh, that we helped get to the next level, uh, again, all for free. And I had two moms that came to me and said, hey, I got a homeschool kid that um, uh, doesn't want to play six-man football, wants to play 11-man football. And um, so I said, well, let me see what we can do. And that was in May of 2019. And by August, we we had a team. And so, um, you know, it, and it, it was, a, it was a, a godsend. So we, we had uh, – uh, a sixth through eighth grade and a ninth through grade, uh, ninth through twelfth grade team, and um, I'd say probably ninety percent of those kids had never played organized football before a day in their life, and so um, it was fun. It was interesting. Oh wow! <laughs> and that's that's where the Rattlers came from. So, and then wow. the following year, COVID hit, and rather than fold up and pack up and and go away. Um, you know, we, we listened to God's calling and, uh, we decided to expand. And so we added Rattler's cheer to it. And, uh, you know, uh, we had a full, um, we, we had a full middle school and high school cheer program that year as well. And, and we've had it ever since. So, uh, now we're looking at adding, uh, in this, this spring will be softball and baseball as well. Okay. Okay. So, um, what all programs are you offering? Are you looking to get into like, yeah. um, 
I guess I would say a little brief, um, not, you don't have to go into details, but just sure. a little bit about your vision of which, how you see this thing growing in the next few years or, you know, just how you expanding as a person, just business, all that. Yeah, sure. Um, again, uh, first and foremost, and, and this is what I tell people all the time too, this isn't my program. Uh, this is the Lord's program. Um, first and foremost, I, I'm yes, just the guy that is, uh, lucky and, and blessed enough here to to kind of guide his his vision of it um, for for what I see. Um, we uh, and, and we have some great folks such as yourself and uh, uh, and some other coaches and all that are are really uh, there to help out, which is, is amazing. So, um, what we what we're looking at doing is um, first and foremost we have. Um, like I said, we're going to continue the football program. We're at about 85 kids now, um, which is, is truly amazing um, between our middle school and our high school. Um, we have uh, about 30 kids, uh, 30 young ladies in our cheer program, uh, middle school and high school. Um, they went to their first camp this year as well, and uh, they got invited to nationals in Florida, which is great. Um we, our football program this year started is the season off at the Independence Bowl in, in Shreveport, which was an uh, amazing opportunity in, in playing uh, a team out of Louisiana. Um, this year, we will start the playoffs next weekend in Texas, and then um, we'll kind of pause that for week two, and we're going to go play in... Uh, at uh, AT&T Stadium will be the first two homeschool teams that I know of. Um, we're going to place the landmark, um, the Cincinnati Landmark Eagles uh, out of Cincinnati, Ohio, at uh, AT&T Stadium uh, on November 5th at 7 p.m. So come on out, uh, watch some good football there. And then um, after that, we'll, uh, in mid-November, be heading to Florida for nationals. Um we have our softball and our uh, baseball program starting this spring. Um, we're looking at adding uh, basketball this summer um, and then carrying that over into the start of next season in the winter. Uh, we're also looking at adding track and cross country and uh, in volleyball as well. So, uh, we got a lot of good things going. Uh, our recruiting is going well. We also rec we we do recruiting for free, and we do that for anybody who um, uh, wants to look at going to the next level to play. So we'll do public school, private school, uh, charter, homeschool. It, it doesn't matter. Um, over the last three and a half years, uh, the Atlas program has has worked with some great high school coaches and and high schools. Uh, in the area, um, and we've put about 40 kids um, to the next level and done just over $8 million in, in scholarships for those kids. Um, oh, wow. And so it, it's been it's been amazing. We got some good kids in, in the class of uh, 2023 uh, right now as well. Um, and, again, we don't charge anybody anything. So, um some of the sponsors you see on there, H2H, uh, Heisman in the Hall. We've been blessed to to have had uh, the great Tim Brown, uh, 87 Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame and then Hall of Fame winner from uh, – um, uh, or Hall of Famer from uh, the Raiders uh, support us. Bruce Colley worked on us with uh, the Alamo Defenders. Uh, I got – I got to take 36 public school, private, and charter, and homeschool kids to go play uh, against Team Canada down in San Antonio this year. Uh, Bruce was uh, great, and he won two Super Bowls with uh, Joe Montana and uh, the 49ers. Um, so he helped us coach uh, down there. And then uh, Ray Crockett. Uh, Ray is a phenomenal, phenomenal man. Um incredibly godly man as well. Uh, all three of these gentlemen are incredibly godly men um, and really are at the, the top of of your NFL 
um, uh, you know, game. Ray's a two-time oh, yeah. um, Super Bowl uh, champion as well uh, with the Broncos. He's in the Baylor Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and, again, he's just an extraordinary businessman. Um, but Ray's come out and talked to us, uh, to our kids. He's, you know, come out during uh, a seven-on-seven seven and, and talked to our kids and another another set of kids uh, from another school. So he's taking his time out on a Saturday to do that. Um, he's just just phenomenal. So a um, lot of love for, for Ray Crockett. Oh, wow, man. And one of the things I would encourage people to do, especially for um those potential kids and parents, I would tell them, man, that what um the Atlas is doing, what you're doing with Atlas, it's a blessing, man. And the reason why I say that, because um, like I said earlier, I played football. I went to high school and I played football. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing about my situation was um one opportunity. I don't feel like back then I was given the right opportunity because I had coaches that were more invested in winning than in kids. And one of the things that I do see with you, no matter win, lose, draw, you want to ensure that every kid get an opportunity to go out there and play football, even if it just get two seconds of film. That's sure. better than nothing versus, you know, programs to where, you know, you may have a kid that has potential, but they may not be the favorite kid or the kid that everybody um see has, I guess, NFL aspirations or whatever the case may be. So they won't put that kid in. But the one thing I love about the team um is seeing that you give every kid the opportunity, whether they play football before um, are they one of the greatest kids that you ever seen? Each kid has the opportunity to come out here and play football. Then two, the recruiting bid. Like back in my days, man, recruiting was something that was totally different. Like we didn't have a huddle or none of that stuff. I think it was recruits mm -hmm. unlimited or you had to catch a kid that came in your neighborhood, like just mm -hmm. different things like that. So when I looked to go play football or when I was in high school, I didn't get recruited by nobody, one, because my school was a brand new school. So the, sure. we weren't on their radar, how, um, like how nowadays you don't have to be on their radar. You just have to be on huddle or whatever, just to you know upload some information up there and then people will see you. And then um, because, because of that, I didn't get recruited. So I ended up trying to go to um, college as a walk on. And when sure. they told me, hey, you got to wait a whole year, I was like, you know what? I don't like school mm -hmm. that much. So. I ended up quitting. So that's why I think it's a blessing that kids have this opportunity that, you know, um, the Lord has used you to present to them to where, man, if they're missing, you know, any of those things or they don't have the right organization around them, I truly, truthfully, honestly believe that this would be a great program for them to be a part of because, man, there's so many benefits to being there. And then the key word that I keep hearing you say is free. Now that word back yeah. in the days, that was one of those yeah. words where when you hear free, they like, okay, what, what's what's the catch? What's the catch? Yep. <laughs> but I'll tell people, man, honest, <laughs> honestly, the only catch is, man, you got to get up, get in your car, and bring your kid down there so that they can be coached. That's, you <laughs> That's know, the catch. Um, and, and and even even that too, you know, we we will do everything possible. Um, you know, I, I had a young man who. Um, he, he kid never played a, a day for me. Um, I, I met the kid and, um, got to know the kid. Um, you know, I know the coach very, very well. Great man. Um, and the kid had, had an opportunity to go for a college visit, uh, up to a school in Kansas. And, um, you know, the, the coach just, he was not able to, to get away that day to take him up there. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's go. So, you know, we took a six hour drive up and uh, that morning and we did the whole tour together, sat there, met with the coaches, met with finance, met with everything with them. Um, and then drove the six hours back. Um, you know, but I mean, it, if that's all it takes, you know, if it takes, if it takes me driving a kid six hours up to a school, do a tour with them and stuff and then, and then drive back with him. You know, if it, if it takes me, you know, a day to sit with a mom, you know, a single mom, you know, whose son's going to have a wrist surgery, you know, for breaking his wrist, 
after football season, not even football related, you know, because it's the first surgery that, you know, her baby boys ever had, you know, um, that's what we're here to do too. It's, you know, this game is more than just what, what football is. Um, like you said, the X's and O's are one thing we can, you know, I can sit and talk X's and O's with people all day long and, and I love to do that. That's fun. Um, but you know, there, there's, there's a lot more to it when you get invested with the, the kids, um, and, and they get invested back, you know, um, we, uh, we are, like I said, we're, we're 100% free. We do it in, in everything else. People always ask the same question. Well, how do you do that? You know, we have amazing donors, uh, amazing people who see the vision of what we're doing and support it. Um, you know, uh, all of our families pay taxes to public schools as well. Um, you know, but they elect to homeschool. That's their choice and that's fine. That's um, sweet. You know, we just now are coming alongside and saying, hey, you have a, a, va a valid place to come play now. Um, and you don't have to worry about safety as far as the equipment goes. Rydell was amazing. They sponsored us at the very beginning, gave us all our our helmets and uh, shoulder pads. And, you know, what a, what a blessing they have been. Um, you know, so, I mean, we, we've really had a lot of luck uh, along the way. Uh, in getting this this opportunity going, our our greater vision is we're we're actually in the process right now of looking for land, um, okay. and so we're looking. We are a five hundred one c nonprofit um, guide star, which is is like the leading verification of nonprofit organizations out there. Um, we hold a platinum level uh, seal of transparency with them. Uh, we're an open book, which platinum is their highest level of transparency. Um, so, you know, for those that, that are skeptical when it comes to, you know, donating nowadays, which, you know, rightfully so, um, money can be tight sometimes. So you want to make sure your money is going to a place that is reputable. Um, yes, you know, we, we actually make that extended effort to go through GuideStar, give everything that we have, put it all out there so everybody can see. And, uh, that, that gives us that platinum level of of transparency, but, you know, we're looking for land now. Um, you know, we're looking for a facility of our own. Uh, we want an opportunity for homeschoolers to be able to come, uh, get that, that more socialization as well. Um, where we can also teach traits. Um, we can do, you know, the, the technical world out there is, is hurting for jobs. You know, we'd love to partner with, with businesses, um, you know, airlines, whatever the case may be, uh, oil companies, uh, gas, you know, natural gas, whatever it is to, you know, hey, come invest in what we're doing. We'll, we'll get the kids working on the, on those types of things. And then you've got a employee once they graduate high school, you know. Um, so, I mean, we've got a lot that we're working through. Um, you know, we want to we want to build a facility as well. Um, where we can, you know, house our own games um, and, uh, and you know, really make that state of the art as well. So that, that's kind of where our vision is going. No, and, I, and what I would say, man, that's an awesome vision because, I mean, as you are sitting here talking about a lot of that, man, I can see, you know, with everything going on in our society, it's like God's timing and man's timing. It's two different timing. Like, God to have you right where you need to be in a moment where it may seem like at the time it don't make sense, but it is making sense because in the time yeah. we live in and after the pandemic, look at it. Like not only did he give you the vision, but he gave you provision. Now you fast forward and you look at like just after COVID, so many people are homeschooling their kids, but they don't have nowhere to send them. Right. <laughs> and I know you didn't do it for that reason. You did it because it was no, only yeah. hard to do it. it was, but it was, look at how it all played out. Sure. <laughs> I mean, again, if you're, you know, if you're as a parent, let's say you're able to, to teach your kids about history or you're able to teach your kids about, you know, uh, English or, you know, science or whatever, but you want nothing to do with algebra or pre-calculus or something like that. Well, you know what? We want to give the opportunity to say, hey, look, we're, 
you know, we're here. You do all that other stuff that you know that you're capable of doing. We're going to provide a teacher here that's going to be able to teach that that algebra, that free calculus, that uh, biology, whatever the case may be, um, in, in a in a kind of a la carte setting. So um, you know, the the vision would be, you know, a kid can come to to the center. Um, they, you know, do their uh, you know, pre-calculus work that day. They have that class, that pre-calculus class. Let's say it's on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, the rest of their work, they can kind of hang out at the center for the day. Um, they can do some work. They they can get some tutoring if they need it. Um, they, you know, after class, they go and um, they can get some uh, uh, weightlifting in. Uh, some strength and conditioning program with a with a strength and conditioning coach there. Um, after that, we'll have uh, the opportunity for them to get lunch uh, there at the center as well. From there, they can go um, and take uh, SAT, ACT prep courses um, and classes to get them ready for that. Um, after that, they can go see the trainer, make sure that they're they're good and stretched out. They have any tape needs or or anything along those lines. Um, if it's football, they can go see a quarterback coach or, um, you know, uh, watch some film. And then from there, they just walk out on the field and they're ready to go. Um, you know, that, that's kind of the vision and, and we think would be great for parents. So, um, we're also looking into the option this year, uh, as soon as this year as, uh, offering a graduation for, all homeschoolers in the, in the area as well. So um, we know that's a big a big need and that's a big ask of a lot of parents because their kids may not have an opportunity to have a graduation ceremony. Well, we want to provide that that service as well. So if we can do that for them, um, you know, we're, we're going to look at doing that. We just did a homecoming and had kids from all over the area come and, and do a homecoming dance and festive, you know, festivities and all as well. And, and it was a great success. And I, I'm be honest too, and all of that is a blessing. And I'm saying that because um, one of the things I remember you saying to the kids is, man, I don't want to hear y'all say we just a homeschool team or mm -hmm. we just homeschool kids. And you know, one of the people that most of those kids don't, I don't know if they know about, but Tim Tebow was a homeschool yes, quote unquote kid. But look at all the things that he did, man, with God's, yeah. you know, provision and. Just him putting in the effort and having faith and just believing that, hey, this is what I want to do. I'm going to go out there and do it. And that's a lot of what I'm hearing with just your vision and what you're trying to do. You're not looking at, okay, these obstacles exist. You're looking at this is what I'm going to do and this is how it's going to happen, the way yeah. it's going to happen. And you just like you pushing beyond limits. And, man, I, that's why I believe that anybody who looks at this video Need to find something to invest to, man. Invest, invest here, invest here. Yeah, because and, and just being a part of it, yeah. I know it's worth it. And that's our motto. Our motto is invest in them today, so they can invest in others tomorrow. Yes, and sir. you know that that's really what we believe in is that you know we we want kids to start getting that mentality of look, you know, if you have the opportunity to help somebody for no other reason than it's the right thing to do, then you know what? It, that's what's going to make this world a better place. Yes, and, um, you know, right now, if you look at what our program is about, that's what it's about. You know, we've got coaches, we've got parents, we got other players that are doing things, um, you know, uh, Dr. Clearfield with Motion is Medicine over in North Richland Hills, okay? he, Him and his staff, they come out to all of our home games, and they provide, you know, uh, athletic trainer and, you know, medical support at our home games, you know, for our folks. And, and he doesn't, you know, he does all that just uh, because he feels it's the right thing to do. You know, again, that's kind of where we're talking about, like, hey, look, you know, he has the ability, he has the skills to do that. And then, you know, he's transferring that and he's coming out and helping out, you know, people that, that he knows could use the help. And so, you know, again, 
back onto our kids then, you know, what are you going to do when you have the opportunity to help someone? And it could be as simple as something like, hey, you, you have an opportunity every day. You can hold a door for someone. You can see a piece of trash roll down the road. Yeah. You know, um, whatever the case may be, you know, you have those opportunities to do something um, to help make this world a better place every day. And I would say, man, since I've been around the program, that is contagious because um, mm -hmm. yesterday, junior high, man, we had one of the greatest practice ever. Like when I say I've never seen these kids play like that, I mean, mm -hmm. man, these kids have been playing. They have been practicing. And it shows me that the future for the Rattlers is very, mm -hmm. the ceiling is going to be very high. And these guys will yeah. be unstoppable. But it started with just the vision that God gave you. And it trickled mm -hmm. down to one of the, I would say, not the weakest kid, but one of the kids who had the most struggle that I personally knew was Alex. I watched mm -hmm. Alex from day one go from a timid kid to now Alex ready to hit. And when I say ready to hit, man, Alex don't have that fear that he used to have. And it just, mm -hmm. it all goes back to what you're saying, man, as a collective, us doing our part. But then I can take it to the biblical side of it. That's what they did in the book of Acts. They all had they all had different things. They brought it all together and they made sure that they distribute so that everybody had and they just took care of one another and it goes back to like just the military. Same thing, man. Yeah. Just, you know, each one teach one, everybody jump in, let's do this together, family, which is the motto that we always say after we um, you know, leave yeah. before we leave practice. It's just that's what it's all about. And you know, I would say, man, it's a blessing to just be a part of that because yeah. I mean, something that started out small as a seed, look at it blossom. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, again, um, it's a blessing having you. So we're, uh, we're blessed to have you. And, uh, you know, I, I can't thank you enough as well. Yes, sir. So before we close out, man, um, sure. there may be that one veteran out there or maybe a group of veterans out there that may be asking, hey, coach, man, how how, how, how do I overcome the challenges I'm facing after being in the military. What do I do with my time myself? I'm collecting disability. I don't know what to do, or I'm out here struggling. What do I do? What do I do? Yeah, you know, I, I think for me, um, it, it's one of those, and you know, I, I tell this to to folks all the time too. You know, we all we all get it. You know, we all get the the same the same. Uh, quote, right? Thank you for your service, right? Um, and it's in, it's appreciated, it's meaningful, you know, um, but like I've, I've told some, you know, I, I like to tell people this, um, when they say that to me, you know, um, you know, I always say thank you. However, um, when I joined the military, it was because I wanted to serve. Um, and I, I think there's that piece to pretty much every real, you know, veteran that's out there. They, they had that piece of, they wanted to serve something more than themselves. They wanted to serve their country. Um, the, the person next to them, they, they had that service instilled in them, whether, whether it be just, they were born with it or it, it was learned over time. Um, and so for me, uh, I think it's important to just find some, some way that will, that will keep you getting up every day to serve. Um, yes, and so, you know, for me, it, you know, this is, this is it. This is one of the, the ways I'm able to do that. Um, you know, I, I find, um, you know, get, getting up is to, I know I've got something to do tomorrow. I've got something to do tomorrow. I've got something to do tomorrow. Um, yes, and for me, it's not about, it's not about money. It's not about, you know, um, am I going to have my name in the paper or on the, I, none of that means anything to me. So um, for me, it, it's about, you know, m my kids and my wife, you know, um, yes, and it's about the the opportunity to serve others. Um, what am I doing that's going to make a difference? And so, 
Um, that's what I would tell, you know, my advice would be to most veterans, um, you know, is, is find a way to find something that you're passionate about. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be football. It doesn't have to be sports. It, it could be anything. Um, just find something you're passionate about and, and go serve. And your message to parents and kids out there looking at this. <laughs> my parents and kids. Um <laughs> Parents listen, or kids listen to your parents, and, and, you know, parents listen to your kids. Um, but uh, if, if you're homeschool, come on out and uh, and be part of Atlas. Um, and, and same thing, we're looking for, for um, you know, ways to serve all, all these kids and, and parents. So we're not just looking for athletes. If you have a kid that um, likes to, to write um, and is interested in being a writer one day, hey, come on out. You know, we'll have them write some stories and, and some articles up. Um, photography. We have a young lady right now that is working with our photographer, taking pictures and all. You know, come on out. We'll, we'll get you into that. Um, I mean, whatever it is that your your interest is, um, come on out, and we'll find a place to plug you in and, and get you involved um, into what we're doing. So, um, and the same goes for parents, too. Um and then at the end of the day, it's all about fellowship. Um, you know, the thing I'm looking forward to most th- for me that I'm looking forward to most about the Cincinnati team coming in is the is the night before the game. We're going to get an opportunity to fellowship with them. Um, you know, we're going to host a dinner for them and their their families and kids and cheerleaders and, you know, uh, all them. And for me, I'm looking forward to that more than I'm looking forward to the game, you know, um, I, 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 I you look know. forward to the game. I, I, I'm, I'm excited about the game. I, I love, I love football, but the opportunity to fellowship with other people from another time zone, you know, um, yeah, is, cool. is, uh, is, is, is great. And, and I'm looking forward to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, coach, man, I want to say thank you, man, for coming on vet talk, sharing your stories, sharing your resource, mm-hmm. And man, it's been an honor to just have you on here. And I just, yeah. you know, um, wish you Godspeed. And man, I can't wait to do something like this again, man. When it gets to sure. when it grows to the next level, so we can show people, hey, um, the progression that you know you have made, I have made. And hey, man, let's keep doing what we doing for these kids. Um, Absolutely, keep serving because all we know is serving. So let's keep yeah. being servants and doing what we doing. Love you, thank you, and it's Love an you honor, too, man. And if there's anything uh, I can do for you or, or any of of your viewers uh, at any time, by all means, let me know, and, and I'm always happy to help. Yes, sir. I thank you for that, Coach. You have a blessed day. Thank you one. for Enjoy having me. Enjoy your day. I see you, man. You too. All, all right. right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.